I'm looking at Isaiah 17. A lot of people look at this as being an unfulfilled biblical prophecy. I mean, if you go on YouTube, a lot of people are talking about this as being an unfulfilled biblical prophecy uh, online just in general. The Bible of Damascus always looked at, I mean, I hear biblical uh, doom of Damascus right before our eyes, uh, an article from 2013. I personally look at this as being fulfilled. I'm going to lay out my argument as to why I think it's fulfilled. So it says the burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a ruinous heap. Today, in 2015, people do not talk like this, especially in the West, I'd say, without meaning a total, utter destruction. Unfortunately, people in the Bible talk like this fairly regularly. I suspect that Damascus being a ruinous heap and ceasing to be a city is really just talking about a foreign power coming and invading Damascus. Verse 2 says, The cities of a roar forsaken, they will be for flocks which lie down, and no one will make them afraid. I suspect the majority of individuals that are reading this passage don't know where a roar is. Uh, but some people, uh, maybe a lot of people, maybe a lot of folks know. I didn't know where it was until I looked at a map. Uh, here's Damascus. It's being referred to right there in verse 1. Way down here is the cities of a roar that are being mentioned there in verse 2. Jump over here to verse 3. It says, The fortress also will cease from Ephraim, the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. This is really the Arameans. They will be as the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. This is not wrong. It's just, uh, in a lot of Bibles, it says Arameans. And verse 4, it says, In that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob will wane, and the fatness of his flesh grow lean. So we aren't going to read the whole passage, but this will give us a little larger context, more than just one verse. You know, one of the issues I see in the Bible, generally speaking, is individuals aren't paying attention to the context that's going on. And usually it's created because they're not reading enough verses. Um, in many cases, not reading enough chapters. But in this case, I think that it, it really is a focus on one verse. And the majority of this, most people probably don't know what a roar is. They may know what Ephraim is. Generally speaking, they probably view the they. <laughs> Most everyone that doesn't know views all of this as being rather very mysterious. And then views this portion right here as being an unfulfilled biblical prophecy that won't be completed until sometime maybe in our lifetime in the future of 2015. Uh, so I think that's how most people view this. But if an individual is reading the whole chapter and has been reading several chapters back even, this event looks very different. If we back up to Isaiah 10 and start up here, uh, let's just start in the middle of this, start in verse 7. If you read the whole passage here, this is God pronouncing a denouncement against Assyria. Verse 7 says, Yet he, that's the king of Assyria, does not mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off not a few nations. For he says, this is now the king of Assyria speaking, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kauno like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms <clears throat> of the idols, whose carved images excelled those of Jerusalem and Samaria, as I've done to Samaria and her idols, shall I not do also to Jerusalem and her idols? So here the king of Assyria is listing off several nations he's already destroyed. Notice who's in the list. Samaria, Damascus, uh, and he does his desire to come up against Jerusalem. So let's look again at the map. This is the king of Assyria saying he has destroyed Damascus and he has destroyed Samaria. In Isaiah 17, the focal point is Damascus, Aror, and Ephraim. Look at the map. There's Damascus. Here's Ephraim. There's Samaria. Here's a roar. So let's get this right. In Isaiah 10, the king of Assyria says that he destroyed Samaria and Damascus. Damascus is right here. Samaria is right here. He already took control of both of these areas. In Isaiah 17, the prophecy is that Damascus will be destroyed and Ephraim will be destroyed. Ephraim and Samaria are usually, uh, though they're different areas, they're frequently referred to basically as this is northern Israel. So here's Samaria. Here's Ephraim. Isaiah 17 says Ephraim will be destroyed. 
Damascus will be destroyed or taken, so to speak. Samaria will also be destroyed or was destroyed. Damascus was destroyed or taken, if you will. In Isaiah 10, he already completed it. So Isaiah 17 isn't a new prophecy. It's kind of the rehashing of another prophecy. Because see, if you back up even further, go back to Isaiah 8, you'll notice that a whole discussion has taken place in verse 4. We'll start here in verse 3. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Mahir Shalal Hashbaz, for before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, so essentially before the child can talk, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be taken away before the king of Assyria. So right here, in Isaiah the 8th chapter, he's saying that the king of Assyria will do it. Here in Isaiah the 7th chapter is the same prophecy. It says, For the head of Syria is Damascus. Syria is the Arameans. The head of Syria is Damascus. It certainly is. Here's the Arameans. Here's Damascus. The head of Damascus is Retzin. Remember that name. Keep it inside your mind. The head of Damascus is Retzin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be broken so that it will not be a people. That's northern Israel. Look, it says the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remliah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Uh, typical, very, very powerful language that God usually uses, or at least that's how it's translated to us. Uh, so it's always very interesting when the father speaks the, the change up um, or when he's making the end of a point. Anyway, uh, the head of Ephraim is Samaria. The head of Samaria is Remliahu's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. So this is, the, again, a prophecy saying that Damascus and Ephraim, Ephraim, Samaria, northern Israel, is going to be destroyed. And who's going to accomplish this task? Um, it's the king of Assyria. If you read the rest of the context here, you'll see that he says here in verse 18, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria, uh, in the same day the Lord will shave with a hired razor with those from beyond the river with the king of Assyria. He's the one that comes and accomplishes uh, this task of destroying Ephraim and destroying Damascus. So Isaiah 17 is the same prophecy. Damascus will be destroyed. Ephraim will be destroyed. So Damascus and northern Israel will be destroyed. Uh, they're talking about the exact same places. Damascus and Ephraim are being referred to. So here's Ephraim. Here's Damascus. Uh, in Isaiah 17, it's Damascus and Ephraim. And in Isaiah 10, he says he's destroyed Damascus and Samaria. In Isaiah 8 and Isaiah 7, it's about Damascus and Ephraim. Um, so the passage is entirely fulfilled uh, from the stance that, from my look at it, Isaiah 17 is a fulfilled biblical prophecy. The rest of Isaiah 17 is all about the downfall of northern Israel. The downfall of northern Israel is accomplished by the Assyrians. Uh, you can find maps of the Assyrian conquest online. Here's uh, the Assyrians where they conquered. They came and took Damascus right here, 732. There's Aram. Um, this happened. It happened in the past already. If you consider the rest of the passage of Isaiah 17, it's all about the downfall of northern Israel by the Assyrians. Uh, this is a huge event that takes place during the time of Isaiah. Uh, this prophecy is, is fulfilled in his day. It's not an event that we're looking forward to today. The second argument that I have against this passage is really that there's nothing inside of here that says anything about the last days. None of the phrases that are typical of the end of days are used inside this passage. None of them. It doesn't say the last days. doesn't say the latter days. doesn't say um, in the end. doesn't say in the day of the Lord. Nothing. Um, so how can one read this text and then come to the conclusion it is the um, prophecy of the end of time? It, it, there's nothing here that indicates that. Uh, which is my second argument against it being something for an end-time event today in 2015. Uh, so that is uh, essentially it. I think a close fulfillment passage would be 2 Kings 16.9. Uh, so it says, So the king of Assyria heeded him. Uh, that's listening to the king of Judah. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Kerr and killed Retzin. Uh, remember I said to remember this guy's name. Here he is in Isaiah the 7th chapter. And here we are in 2 Kings.
he had destroyed him, killed him. So this is this is a fulfilled biblical prophecy. Um, this person writes in that's at the head of Damascus is the head of this this union between Damascus and Ephraim, or these two heirs being conquered by the same power, uh, is prophesied in Isaiah seven, Isaiah eight, Isaiah ten, Isaiah seventeen. Uh, it's well known history. It, it happened. Here's a map again of showing the Assyrians came and did this. There's nothing here to indicate that this is an event that will happen in the future. The context says it happened in the past, and it, it did. 732. So uh, that's my argument for Isaiah 17 being a fulfilled biblical prophecy.